Have you ever wondered how NFL teams and NFL quarterbacks have their game balls prepped to make them perfect for game play? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how it's done to get it perfect for your hand so you can learn how to prep footballs so that you can make more consistent throws, have that great tactile feel, and be more efficient as a quarterback. And it's coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I am Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Back when I played, you were not allowed to touch footballs before they got on the field, in either college or when I was playing in any of the pro leagues that I played in. They would come out of the bag, they'd wipe them down, and they'd throw them into practice and try to break them in that way and season the football so that it felt decent when you got into the game. Well, nowadays, they've changed that rule. You look at NFL quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, all these guys, their footballs are seasoned and rubbed and perfected to make them lightly tacky so that they feel really good in your hand, supple and soft so that uh, that grip stays in receivers, they feel soft in receivers' hands, and just a better overall football. They're more weatherproof and everything else. Young quarterbacks don't often get the opportunity to uh, have that experience with the football. So sometimes your balls get super dry in practice. Sometimes they feel you know, worn and weathered. Other times, they just don't feel great in your hand. Today, I'm going to show you how to prep a football so that it, it feels like an NFL football in your hand. Before I get started, if you love football content, make sure that you click on that subscribe button, ring that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, tell us that you like these videos. We'd love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment down below. Let's take a look at how to get your game ball prepped perfectly. First off, welcome to my workshop, otherwise known as my garage, here outside of coaching football and announcing football on TV and this YouTube channel, which I do for you guys. I also love building things, and so this is kind of my place to get away. I have what you might call ADHD. I have a lot of hobbies like building, making, fixing things. And so here in the garage, it's the perfect uh, time for me to show you how to get a game ball prepped and ready to throw. Now, I just got a whole new box of brand new footballs. You might call them pearls if you're a baseball guy. I mean, these things are brand spanking new. Just pull the plastic off of them. And although they look gorgeous, they look pretty, they are hard, they are sharp in several places, uh, they are very stiff feeling. And so they may look great when you first get footballs, but they don't feel good in the hand. And so as a quarterback, guys get particular about the balls they like. Our quarterback likes this Nike ball. And uh, Big Game USA, by the way, did a great job. They're not paying me for this. Uh, Jason Reed was a sales guy who I dealt with, did a fantastic job getting these balls done, customized on time. Uh, but they do a great job. They sell this Nike Vapor Elite ball. They also have the Team USA ball, which is also uh, their own proprietary ball. Cost less, but you don't get that Nike swoosh. And so, no bling. Anyway, back to the story. So what we want to do is we want to get these game balls ready. And you want to get that nice, soft, semi-tacky feel that feels great both when you're throwing it as a quarterback and when you're catching it as a wide receiver. You want to kind of take the edges off the laces so they don't feel so sharp. You want to get the seams so they don't feel so stiff. So when you put your finger in there, you get a nice grip on the ball, get good traction, but it doesn't feel hard, doesn't roll off, and you don't lose that side grip and the quarterback end up throwing off that ring finger or the middle finger. And so there's a whole process for this. When I was a player, both in college and in pros, they didn't let us touch these game balls. So you'd get them, and if you're really sneaky, you might say, deflate them a little bit, throw a damp towel in the dryer with them, tumble them for a little bit, get all that packing crap off of them, uh, but then you just throw them in the practice and try to break them in that way. And so it got them semi-broken in, but you're always constantly licking your fingers, trying to find a way to get tack on the ball, and they weren't great. You just had to, do, go, just had to go with what you had at the time. And so at the time, they weren't allowed to break them in. If you look at NFL balls now, though, those balls look like they've been outdoors for years at a time. And it's due to the process they use to break them in. So I'm going to show you today how to break in a football, how to get it ready for play, how to make it feel absolutely sweet for a quarterback now that we can break in footballs. And I got this calfskin one for you guys at home, that little calfskin or natural color. Uh, it's going to stay lighter, so I think you'll be able to pick it up better in a dark environment at night, Friday night games. So that's why I like the light one. It's going to darken up a lot with this process that we're going through anyway. But I like the look of it, like the black laces, just kind of 
my little flair, my touch to this. But so I'm going to show you how to break them in today. There's a couple things you're going to want to have to start with. And firstly, you're going to want to have plenty of towels that you can room. Okay, if you are a high school quarterback and you're going to do this process at home, make sure you check it out with mom and dad that these are the towels that you can ruin because even these natural calfskin balls have color in that leather. And so that color, as we start to use these towels, is going to come off on those towels. Uh, you're going to want to have, if you can, not absolutely necessary, but I like having them, some gloves to work with. Uh, I like these clear vinyl disposables because they don't rip as much as the latex gloves, the little rubber gloves. These things are great. That way you don't get that same dye that's going to come off on the towel to soak into your hands. You can't get it out for three or four days. So having some gloves on hand are absolutely essential. There is a ball brush that I think Wilson sells online. There's probably a couple other companies that sell them online that you can use if you want to do it by hand. I personally use my drill press and I use brushes. Uh, you can see there's two different ones. I only use one for this process. This is, uh, they're actually sold by Drill Brush and I will put a link for both Big Game USA and drill brush, brush down below in the comments so you guys don't have to search for it online. Uh, I use the most abrasive one. These are plastic. They're not going to scratch the football. You want them to buff up that football. You want them to roughen up the surface a little bit, but not tear into it. So definitely don't use metal brushes on your drill. Uh, use the plastic ones from drill brush. Horsehair brushes are probably the best, but they're like crazy, super expensive. So don't use those. Uh, you could use a grinding wheel, but then you have to find a special wheel for that grinding wheel. The NFL teams have grinding wheels dedicated to breaking in footballs. I don't. I just use a drill press. It gets a nice, you know, 1,420 RPMs. And so it goes for me, allows me access to get into it. I can see it. It's really safe. Uh, and so that's the way I like to work on it as well. The first process in getting a football ready is getting the packing crap that comes on it when you first touch it super slick you can feel that it's got that really slippery edge to it a little squeak on it you can hear it that's whatever they treat it with when they finish this football uh, it's either for packing or to preserve the leather whatever it is that's the very first thing you want to do is we want to get that off the football the way you do that is you take a towel and you get it soaking wet and you start to work on that football well for the magic of video i realized that i had not brought the water so i told you to get the towels you gotta get them wet. Didn't have the water, so I went back, got a bowl of water. This is a good time to put your gloves on here. And we're about to get these balls wet. Now, when I said soaking wet for the towel, we want it wet, you know, heavily damp. We don't want to soak the leather. Our goal here is to get that packing stuff off the outside of the ball. And so I'm gonna get the towel wet uh, after I get these gloves on. And then I'm gonna scrub it this fall. You're gonna go at it pretty good. Again, the, the point is, Getting that packing stuff, getting that gre the leather sealant or whatever it is that they finish this ball with. Uh, you know, these balls, the Wilson balls, they have color in these things. And so when they finish these things, there's a sealant on them. Uh, these calfskin things feel like they have the same sealant. I don't know. I don't know the process. But I'm going to get that towel wet, good and wet. Kind of wring it out so that it's wet, but it's not going to soak into the ball. And I'm going to take this ball. And I'm literally going to work at it. You can see how, at first, how smoothly this towel glides over this football. And that's that packing stuff. As you go a little bit, you'll feel it start to roughen up. You start to raise the grain of that leather. As you do that, that's when you're starting to get at it. You want to get to the leather itself. You don't want to have that packing stuff on there. If you leave it on there, it's going to stay on there, uh, the finish or the sealant. And it's going to keep this ball from being as tacky, as comfortable, as soft uh, as it could be. And so get after it pretty good. You can see this time while I've been talking to you, I'm working on one panel here of this football. And I'm scrubbing it pretty good. And you can see even with this ball, it's got that color coming off. And there's a little, if you can see it, a little color change here in this ball. That's where the packing stuff is. That's where I've been scrubbing at it pretty good. And so keep going until you get all that stuff off of each panel. Um, and you want to scrub it really good. Again, the idea is we're going to get to the leather itself. Uh, once you get down to that leather layer, that's when you can really affect this ball and you know make it soft and supple and sticky, tacky, uh, so that you get a good grip on it no matter where you grab this ball. It makes it way more comfortable for receivers. It makes it feel way tackier in a quarterback's hand. Ooh, so look at me now. You can see him sweating like a hostage here at the uh, 
money exchange, but got to get all that packing stuff off. I've done two of these balls, sweating like crazy. Uh, I'm going to just do two today and show you that. Uh, but remember, get that packing stuff off. It's a huge first step. It's a key to getting these balls just right. And so um, this is done. Now you got to be a little bit patient while you're trying to get these balls right. These have to sit. They have to dry out. This is the first one that I did. Now you can see it's drying up in spots. Right? Spots are getting dry. Second one, still dark. It's going to dry up. Get back to that original fawn skin or natural color. Um, and so while it does that, I'm going to go take a little break. Probably take a shower. And then we're going to go on to step two. And I'll show you how we're going to treat it with some leather treatment. Uh, and then we're going to use uh, Red River football mud. I love this stuff. Everybody has their own special concoction. Mine, uh, I'll show you mine. I'm not, there's nothing secret about it, nothing hiding. People like to try to keep it as proprietary or magic. Nothing magic to it. Let me show you how I put mine together to make these balls feel great. Uh, but anyway, step two coming up next. I'm going to go get some of the sweat off me. All right, so I am back. I did take a shower. I was all sweaty, so I got over that. I'm going to uh, show you stage two now. Put some more gloves back on. Uh, because we are now going to prepare the leather, uh, get it kind of waterproof it and make it more supple in the beginning here um, by using a lotion or a leather treatment, leather conditioner. You can see I use leather honey, uh, leather conditioner. It's good stuff. It comes out, it literally kind of feels like honey. Um, it doesn't end up super oily but it, uh, it conditions that leather, makes it more supple to begin with. I think it waterproofs it a little bit. Um, and I put together this protocol of mine from watching several videos, talking to several equipment, man, they all do it a little bit different. This is the way I found it. I like it, makes the balls last longer, makes them more tacky. But essentially, you can see I've got the two balls that we started with. I stacked them up like this, so they dry off quicker. They're back to that original calfskin color now, but they don't, they're not shiny. They got rid of that packing stuff so they're not shiny at all um, and they're prepped and ready to put that leather on or the leather lotion on the leather honey best way to do it put about I don't know quarter to a half dollar size of the leather honey in your glove and then here is where you want to start avoiding the laces so I started the back panels first but I'll just put the ball down and take that leather honey and rub it into the ball you can see it as it soaks in the leather will start to darken up and so you want to continue to rub until that stuff kind of darkens up evenly at this point too you'll start to see where you may have missed some of that packing stuff because as much as you scrub you're inevitably going to miss some but for each panel i'll use about the same amount of that leather honey about a quarter to a half a dollar somewhere in between there and i'll kind of rub it on there and get it in there good to start so that it darkens up pretty good you don't need to spend forever on it, you know. About a minute per panel is probably pretty good. And then hit the next one. Remember, trying to keep this off the laces. So as you handle the football, you're going to have this leather honey on your hand on the other glove that you're handling the football with. Try not to get it on the laces if possible. You can, you can take it off later. It just makes it a lot harder. But uh, so going through this process, every single panel, and you can see... It's a little splotchy like that as you're rubbing it in, but then it kind of all darkens up like that once you get that leather honey in there. Uh, rub it until you see it kind of darken up, get really uniform, consistent. Kind of work on it with individual fingers. Kind of rub it in, and again, don't worry about the logos. It's not going to hurt the logos. You're going to want to get it off the logos fully because uh, if you keep any of this lotion stuff on those logos, they get really slick. All right, so I got both balls done. You can see all oiled up way darker now right looking consistent across same thing for the second one just got this done there's a couple things that you can do at this point you want to let this stuff soak into the leather and so you can either let them sit overnight uh, I know a lot of NFL teams used to put them into a sauna you know get it hot uh, if you live in a warm place Arizona California you can put them you know into a hot shed or leave them in the shade outside so it's hot um, and that stuff will soak in pretty good. If you don't have that option, I like, and I love using these power tools, uh, a heat gun. Any standard heat gun at a Home Depot, um, Walmart will do. Uh, I crank it up, put the heat on, really careful now. Again, be careful, it's a heat gun. 
But what you're going to do is you're going to put this heat on the ball. And you're going to watch as you run this heat over the ball how it just starts to soak up that leather honey. It goes from that super shiny look to a nice dry look, but now it's treated. And that heat just starts to pull it right into the leather. Um, again, it's great treatment for this leather for this ball. And all you have to do is on both balls, just don't get too close, don't get too hot, but use the heat gun or let it dry in a place that's hot or give it 24 hours overnight. It'll soak in pretty good. So, all right, got both of these done. You can see they've gone away from that original calf skin. Notice the laces, I'm still pretty dry. Really uh, took my time to not get the laces soaked with that leather honey. Again, if, if you did get any of that leather honey on there, any of that lotion, this is a good time to kind of wipe them down, make sure that they're you know, not getting that stuff stuck in between the laces, all the areas. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So uh, you want to make sure that you don't get any grease on it because that's where your quarterback gets his grip, right? It'll be really slick if he does it in there. It's a good time to kind of clean up the stripes as well. The stripes on these are inlay. And all the logos, they're going to get that leather honey on them. It's not going to absorb into that plastic. So get it all off of there as well. So now you asked, well, when did that cool drill press come into it? This is the first time that I start using the drill press. Some guys will use it after they, you know, initially knock that packing stuff off and they'll hit it with a drill or with a brush after that. I like to use it after I get that first leather treatment on there. It makes that leather supple enough. Uh, it's going to help it absorb in as you, at least in my thinking, help it absorb in as you hit it with that drill press with a brush, kind of brush this thing in, it'll rough it up. And you can feel that this leather is already getting more supple, already getting softer. And so now we go to the drill brush for the first time. We're going to go back to it several times, but I'll show you. All I'm going to do is brush each panel one direction, go through it, hit all four panels, and I'll switch the ball direction and come through and brush it the other way. And then I'll hit some rough spots, some spots that I think may need a little more brushing. You'll notice around the seams, it takes that leather honey a little more because there's holes from those stitches. So you want to make sure that you pay special attention around the seams on any football, around the laces, uh, where you have stuff like that to make sure that you get it manicured just right. All right, so here we go on the drill press. Want to make sure that you get it kicked up. You know, 1400 is good enough for me. There's no specific speed that you have to use. 1400 works for me and again one direction the first go around I'll switch that ball and go to the second direction and no set time no set limit just kind of get what you think is a good piece of roughing this ball up always a good idea when using power tools Safety glasses, you never know what's gonna fly off this ball. So I got some sweet reading glasses here. I'm using my safety glasses. And hit this thing with the drill press. This is also when I like to kind of start on the laces. Remember these laces can be kind of hard and sharp when you get it. And so I will hit it with the drill from each direction, kind of soften them out and get them to set and set down. These footballs are pretty ruggedly made. You, you don't want to grind them down. You don't want to, you know, sand the logos off them or anything. But you want to hit them pretty good, get them roughed up, and you can really feel already the tack in that football has completely changed. Feels like a completely different football already, and we're not even close to done yet. All right, so we have now taken that initial slick packing stuff off the ball and we have treated it with the leather honey you can see this is brand new fresh football this is next generation after we've done those initial treatments so it gets a little bit darker every time now what we're gonna do is we're going to mud these football and this is where the part where everybody thinks it's magic right some kind of magic trick with the mud nothing magic to it again big game usa is where i get it Red River football mud. You open this stuff up and you can see inside, it's got a little shine to it there. It's got some kind of emulsifier. It's kind of a little bit sticky. It's kind of like it's brick dust mixed with maybe lanolin or something like that. I don't know what it is. But again, more of that leather treatment in the mud. 
And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a reasonable, healthy piece of this. So I'll just take, got a plastic bowl. You know, so if you're doing this at home, this part gets really messy. So as if the other parts weren't really messy. Uh, and I forgot to tell you on the last stage, once you start putting that leather honey on there, that ball starts to feel like a slick pig. So be careful when you're holding it. Don't do it over the carpet. Don't do it over anything that you don't want to stain. I do it out here on the workbench. Seems to work out. My wife doesn't get upset. But I take, you know, good chunk of this Red River football mud and put it in to a bowl. That's enough to do a couple balls right there. And you can probably get, you know, four or five balls per tin if you're a little bit stingy on this. Um, but I would rather, you know, buy a bunch. I got a bunch of it here. Uh, to do all the balls that I need to do and make sure that I've got enough on the ball. You only have to do this once, any football. You only have to do it once. And then after that, you're just going to treat it with lotion. I'll show you that lotion later. It's Kiwi Leather Lotion. They sell the Mojo Lotion at Big Game USA. Kiwi Leather Lotion, for me, gets tackier. That, that Mojo Lotion leaves a little bit of a slick film. This stuff, you put it on there, you let it dry, and that ball feels tacky. But I add a touch of this stuff because you want to make this... Red River football mud, a little bit more of a liquid than just the mud itself. What we're trying to do in this process is wet sand these balls. And so you see here, I'm taking water, mixing the water in, no set formula to it. You're just going to end up with this kind of slurry of mud and lotion and water. It all kind of mixes together that you can then use to see if you can can you see that in there before it pours out there we go maybe turn this down a little bit but it's that slurry that's kind of the consistency you want right there that's just about right so pours out um, enough mud enough lotion enough water no set it doesn't have to be exact amounts no recipe for it just get that slurry together and then once again I'm going to don the gloves because this part is messy. Back to the gloves. And I'm going to take this mud that I just mixed up, that mud slurry, and I'm going to rub this ball down with it. I am really wet sanding, period. That's all there is to it. The emulsifier that's in there is going to soak into the ball. Uh, the brick dust or the sand, the mud part of it, is going to kind of buff that ball and it's going to create uh, a rougher surface on that ball and what that does it gives you more surface area it softens that ball a little bit uh, gives it more opportunity for tack takes off some of that um, kind of newness to the ball the sharpness to the ball uh, but then after we treat it with the mud I'm going to hit it with the brush again I'm going to wait 24 hours so I put it on I wait 24 hours but then I'm going to hit it with the brush again get all that mud off there make sure I get all the seams cleaned out uh, and then I'm going to hit it one last time with that Kiwi Lead Lotion, brush it again, and these balls will be done. But right now, it's time for the mud, and I'll show you what that looks like right here. Just like I did with that leather honey, make sure that slurry's good and mixed. Just get my hands in there. You can see, just dipping in with my fingers like this, right? I'll pull some out, and as soon as I, when I pull that out, I'll just put it right on the ball. And I'm not just wiping it on the ball and letting it go. I am literally working the ball with this slurry so I'm putting it on and rubbing it in there trying to sand trying to really sand this ball with that mud I want to make sure that I work it over give each panel about I don't know three minutes where I'm just working at it sanding it with this mud you know get the mud off your fingers turn your hand backwards kind of really rub it on there work it in uh, so here's the part where I told you about. He's a right-hander, right? So right-hander would grip the ball like this. Really work over where that right thumb's going to go here. Work it in so that his hand just feels super comfortable. We're going to get the whole ball, but I pay special attention to where my righty is going to throw from. So rub this in. You can go different directions if you want to, just to kind of get that sanding effect on this ball. Work it over good. This will work up a sweat too. And so that's the first panel. You can see, spend a good time. I'm gonna spend a couple more minutes on this, but 
you don't need to see here, sit here and watch me mudding my ball. That's the concept. You want to do every panel. Once again, we're staying away from the laces with this mud. It will get caught in those, those laces. So stay away from the laces with this mud. Doesn't matter if you get in the outside seams. We're going to hit that later and take those out. But uh, rub it over really good on each panel. Um, get it going so that you have that good sanding effect. And then we're going to let them sit. I'll come back to you. I'll show you that step next. All right, next day, as you can see, uh, I've been working on a bunch of balls. I'm all sweaty here. So, but we're at the final couple stages here. We got the balls, got them all mudded up, got the mud still on there. Uh, we're about to put the finishing touches, the finishing brushes on these things. So, first thing you want to do, you got a bunch of sand on here left over from that mud. You're going to want to kind of brush it off. You can do it with your hand, you can do it with the brush. All I'm doing is brushing this stuff off because we're going to hit it with that drill brush next. And so you get as much of that sand off as possible. What happens is if you leave that sand on there, as you hit it with the drill brush, it comes flying back at you. You don't want that. So get this stuff off there first. Let me fix that camera a little bit here so that we are uh, upright. Don't want you guys to feel like you're getting seasick back there. And you can see I got like five of these things done. Got a couple more left back there. They've already been dried. I just got to treat them now and then mud them. But so got most of the sand off that one. Get most of the sand off this one with my hand. And again, you'll see, really took precautions to avoid the laces with the mud. So, and again, I told you, you know, leave them overnight, which is great. Let's that soak in. The can says leave it for an hour. You know, kind of get the feel that you want for your football. You don't want it to feel oily. If you leave it on too long, it will feel greasy. If you do too much, it'll feel greasy. And so it takes a while to get that feeling back out of the football. Um, you know, if you want to start off slow, put it on for an hour, kind of brush it off, see what the football feels like after that, go for it. But here is the final stage. All right, didn't have my trusty reading glasses out here today, so I'm gonna go with some safety glasses out here in the garage. I always got a pair of these when I'm working with power tools. But so remember, sand's gonna come back at you if you're using a drill press like this. Uh, if you're using a buffing wheel, it's gonna go down, but Safety glass is always good when you're using power equipment. So we're gonna turn it on. And we're just gonna do the same thing with that ball again. We're gonna put it in there. And kind of let that drill brush do its work. You know, this leather is pretty tough. It can handle a little bit of pressure on it. And so, work that brush across it, get everything buffed out. And I, you can feel, I can feel that sand coming back and hitting me. I don't know if you can hear it on the mic. But change the angle on the ball. And you can see how clean that's coming out when we buff it through. It's got a nice, soft, tacky feel to it. Buff all that stuff out. We're going to keep going on both panels. Go both directions with the brush. So that is what that ball looks like. When it is all done, it is perfectly tacky. I mean, this ball feels fantastic. It's ready to go into a game right now. Uh, you can put it in a game and it's uh, soft, it's tacky, even though it's inflated to 13 pounds, it's full legal. It's got the uh, high school ready symbol right there. This is a college legal ball. So it's ready to go into a game. It's all broken in, right? This is a brand new ball, it's never seen the field. And so it is ready to go. That's the process. Uh, you could, if you want to, add one coat of the Kiwi Leather Lotion after that. I'm gonna throw this one in practice, let it get handled a little bit. And then uh, once it does that, it'll start to dry out just like any football does. Put some more of that Kiwi Leather Lotion on it. You can put it on two minutes, five minutes before practice. It'll dry up and it'll get that great tacky soft feel back to it again. And so that's how you do it. Make sure you guard the laces. Get a great football, football that Tom Brady would love to play with right there. Uh, you at home, I just, I, I dig gadgets, I dig fun stuff, I like, you know, building and creating things, and so, um, just wanted to show you, that's how I prep game balls, I'm not an equipment guy, never thought I'd be an equipment guy, but uh, quarterbacks like their balls the way they like them, so that is game prep, the way they do it in the NFL, the way they do it in college, uh, and the way any quarterback who works with me gets their ball prep for them. Appreciate you watching, just thought I'd give you the insights on getting the ball ready to play a game, and I'll talk to you again soon.